Sometimes our computers can feel like a prison or a jail cell. Sometimes our computers don't do the things that we need them to do, and sometimes they don't do the things that we want them to do. Well, today I'm going to be showing you a solution to break out of the problem. But first, I need to get out of here. Uh, hello? Hello? Anybody? This isn't funny. No! <laughs> Hey guys, it's Malcolm here with Hacking Off. I hope you guys had a great spring break, but now it's time to get back to work. So today we're going to be discussing operating systems. There are so many different kinds of operating systems. Some I'm sure you've heard of, and some you've probably never heard of before. So really, what is an operating system? An operating system is the main software that controls the basic functions of a computer. That might be anything from opening a program, installing programs, controlling the inputs like a mouse or a keyboard, or even controlling the graphic interface that allows you to watch this video. Some of the earliest computers were mainframes that lacked any form of an operating system. Programs would be loaded onto the machine and they'd be allowed to run until they finished or most of the times until they crash. They used raw data that was usually on a punch card or sometimes on magnetic tape. Computers of this time performed one job and one job only. They had no need or ability to multitask. But as processing power continued to grow, computers became better equipped to handle more than one task at a time. Computers needed a way to switch from task to task, thus giving birth to the operating system. The first true operating system was developed in 1965, and it was called NAM... that. It was produced by the General Motors Research Division. This was an extremely primitive operating system. It normally handled tasks like debugging. Modern operating systems didn't really show up till the late 70s, early 80s, about the same time that game consoles started to become popular. Apple's first operating system was simply called system software. It hit the market in 1984. The following year, Microsoft released Windows 1.0. These were the early works of the operating systems that we still use to this day. Microsoft Windows and Mac OS are some of the most popular operating systems on the market. But there are so many operating systems out there. Popular operating systems are completely fine. They can handle almost everything that you throw at them. But they are designed with limitations, boundaries, that you can't cross. To really explore the limits of your computer, you're going to want to install a more aggressive, malleable type of operating system. And for that, you have many options. There are a few things that you want to take into consideration whenever finding an operating system. Price, performance, and common use range is something that you might want to think about. Some operating systems, like Backtrack 5, are strictly for hacking. They have hacking software built directly into the operating system. But with this type of operating system, don't be expecting to check your Facebook or beating off to YouPorn. These aren't the types of operating systems that you want to use day to day. There are some operating systems that give you a really good balance of straight hacking machine and a daily driver. Linux is something you've probably heard of. Linux OS is an open source operating system. What that means is the original source code is made freely available to be modified. Also, open source means that it's distributed for free. You won't pay a dime for your copy of Linux. So what's the big deal? Why do so many geeks piss their pants over Linux? Linux distros give the programmers a lot more maneuverability inside the operating system. This gives programmers a lot more freedom to design any type of software that they want and sometimes that could mean malicious or aggressive software. There's no big fear of getting sued by some massive corporation because you use their software in a way that they decided wasn't appropriate. In layman's terms, this just means a hell of a lot more freedom for you and me. So you have Windows now, and you want to give Linux a try. There's no need to do anything crazy like format your hard drive. With Windows, you can dual boot Linux, and today I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, there are many different flavors of Linux. These are a few of them. Today, we're going to be working with Ubuntu. Alright guys, I'm going to give you guys a quick tutorial of how to dual boot Ubuntu on your Windows computer. The first thing you're going to want to do is download the Ubuntu operating system. Link is in the description for the installer for Windows. 
Please donate if you can. After you click your donation, your download will begin immediately. As soon as your download is complete, open up the program. You're going to want to add a username with no capital letters and also your password. Now this is going to allow you to install Ubuntu as if it were a program on your computer. It might take 10 to 15 minutes for the operating system to download, but just sit back and wait. You're going to want to reboot immediately after the download is complete. Then as soon as Ubuntu starts up, just type in the password that you programmed for it, and now you have Ubuntu. Anytime you would like to change your operating system, just restart your computer. It gives you the choice at the beginning to open up using Windows 7 or open up using Ubuntu. So now you have Linux. The best way to learn Linux really is to just dive right in. Just simply use the operating system on a daily basis. Find out the way it functions and the way it runs. This is by far the hardest hurdle for people to overcome when starting a new operating system. Chances are you've been using the same operating system your entire life. If you grew up using Windows, you're probably using a computer with Windows right now. And if you grew up using a computer with Mac OS, more than likely, you're using a computer with Mac OS right now. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if you want a different way to explore your computer, changing your operating system is a huge new land of unexplored Now There are literally thousands of different operating systems. Some I'm sure you guys like, and some I'm sure you guys absolutely hate. In the comments below, let me know what operating system you guys would like to see me install. The one with the most requests I'll feature in an upcoming video. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And until next time, guys, keep hacking off.